Which wireless microphone system is better? The DJI Wireless Mic 2 or the Rode Wireless Pro? Now there's been some juicy arguments about these two brands, most of them in the comments section of my previous videos. So I thought I'd put these two new versions side by side to help you decide which one is right for you and your needs. So I'm gonna compare the sound quality, the transmission distance and stability, what accessories you get in the box, the features, the battery life, workflow, and overall which one is more user friendly. Now don't forget to let me know in the comments which one you prefer after you finish watching the video. Now we're gonna need some sort of scoring system and because I'm hungry, I'm gonna use pizza slices instead of stars or thumbs up. So the brand with the most pizza slices at the end of this video wins the cup. Wins that you don't win, that don't win a cup, it's just, it's just the, the one that I recommend most. So firstly, let's have a look at what you get in the boxes. Now obviously, if you buy the full versions, both kits come with the receiver or the brain, two transmitters, which are the actual microphones themselves, charging case and an accessory case, two magnets, audio cable, the USB-C charging cable, and then the mobile phone lightning adapter or USB-C cable or adapter. With the DJI microphones, you get two fluffy windshields. And with the Rode, you actually get three. So there's a spare in there in case one blows away. Now there are a few extra things that the Rode comes with that the DJI doesn't. For example, a lens cloth. I don't know why it comes with a lens cloth. Everything seems to come with a lens cloth these days apart from a camera or a lens. And then the best part, it actually comes with two lavalier microphones. Whereas on the DJI, you have to buy those separately. And currently they're around 35 pounds each. So a pizza slice there to the road. Now I wanna talk about the design and functionality next because you can look at these side by side on paper and think they're very similar, if not the same. But there are some fundamental differences in the usability between these two that would completely sway my decision either way. And I want you to be aware of everything from both sides and it all comes down to what's most important to you. So let's have a look at the microphones themselves. I prefer the slim design of the DJI. It's a little bit more inconspicuous. I don't know, you can just hold them a little bit easier than these. However, I do like Rode's updated design from the previous versions. I think they look really nice. They do both have this shininess to them though, which I don't think is great. I actually prefer the previous versions of the DJI because it's just a matte black finish. I love the fact that you can see the chip inside. I think it's cool, but my 14 year old self prefers that more than my 35 year old self but they look nice both very well made we'll talk about the buttons and stuff like that on them a little bit when it comes to the receiver though I actually hugely prefer the DJI version for two different reasons one there's a distinct difference between the two microphones and the receiver so when they're in the box you can tell which is which that might sound stupid but when you've got all of these Rode microphones and the receiver next to each other in the case you can't tell which one's which you've got to make sure that you put them away the right way so little things like that that can slow you down slightly when you're in a rush. The DJI has this new scroll wheel and menu button which makes it so much easier to browse through the menus and select all your settings that you need. And while I'm on that, the overall usability on the DJI is just streaks ahead of the road. I've, I've got really frustrated with the road system and I've been not knowing which button did what and obviously you get used to it in time but it's just an extra thing that you have to learn. Whereas with the DJI menu system, it's so intuitive and it's also got the touch screen. You can swipe up, swipe down, press the button, scroll the wheel, everything's where you'd expect it to be. Definitely a pizza slice there for the DJI. If I could give more than one pizza slice out at a time, I'd give it a whole pizza. The DJI has haptic feedback. So when you make a change or when you press record, it actually gives a little buzz. So you know that whatever change you've made has taken place and you can turn that off if you want to. And then another reason why I prefer the receiver of the DJI is because you can mount it forward and backwards. So if you're behind the camera, you can mount it so that you can see the settings and, and go through the settings as you like. If you're actually in front of the camera and you're filming yourself, you can spin it the other way and you can see all the settings, you can see the levels and you can easily access the menu. On the road system, you can only mount it one way. And while you're looking at the camera, you can't see the levels or the settings on the screen because it's mounted on top. So you have to go over to the camera and look above to see what the settings are. Another point to the DJI. 
time. Because the DJI comes with this little clip system, you can easily slot in your phone connectors and attach that to your phone easily, and that just sits nicely underneath your phone. Whereas when you do that on the road, you have to attach the cables and it's just all a little bit messy. So if you did want to clean that up a little bit, you'd probably have to get something like a cage or some sort of case to fix this wireless system too. Another point to the DJI. If you want to attach the windshield to the DJI microphones, they've actually got this little connector now that goes into the jack input where your headphones or your lavalier microphone would go. So that's nice and easy to attach. Whereas the Rode uses the old style of connector where you have to kind of like brush the hair out of the way so you can see and then look for the little two indents, then line them up with that, and then find it, then twist it, and it's on. So, again, just another pizza slice there. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. If that was the only way of doing it, it's fine. But it's just, again, quicker on the DJI. The Wireless 2 microphones come with a charging case and also an accessory case. But what I like about it is, the charging case can slot directly into that accessory case and you can keep all your cables, your windshields, your lavalier microphones and extras in that one case, zip it up, pop it in your bag and it's going to take up one slot in your bag and that's it. Whereas what Rode have done is, I'm pleased they've introduced a charging case, but then if you want accessories, you have to bring the other case with you. That's gonna take up two slots in your bag. I'd rather just take one thing with me than have to remember two things. Let's just keep things simple, shall we? Pizza slice to the DJI. I'm, it, it feels biased. But I'm not, it's just, this just how I feel about it. Speed and ease of use is everything. The units themselves are actually quite difficult to get out of the charging case of the road. And you know, that's good, it's, it means you've got a secure connection, but when all three are in there, you have to grab it from top to bottom. And because that record button is there, I find myself pressing record and starting recording internally of the microphone. It's just so much easier and quicker to get the units in and out on the DJI. So it just makes it a little bit fiddly and I've, I've dropped them a few times because of that. What I really like about the Rode transmitters and what a lot of people were talking about in the comments in the previous video is that the 3.5 mil connectors have a locking mechanism on them so you can screw these securely into the transmitter. That means that you're not gonna accidentally pull them out and then ruin your audio. Definitely a pizza slice there for the road. However, I have found a way around that with the DJI microphones. So I used to play guitar and instead of just plugging your cable in straight into the guitar, if you trod on your cable, it would pull straight out. So all you did was loop it around your strap and then plug it in and pull it tight. So if you trod on it, it would pull tension where your strap is and not pull the cable out. And you can do a similar thing with this. You just feed the cable round the back where the clip is, problem solved. You're not gonna pull your cable out. Plus, it's a 90 degree angled cable. So again, you're a little bit more safe. But it's still a win for the road, I'll give them that. If you use a DJI action cam, like the Action 4, for example, or the Osmo Pocket 3 camera, you can actually connect to those devices just by Bluetooth. So you can just have this and not have to worry about connecting it. Both systems have presets built in. The Rode is called Gain Assist Technology. So it kind of sets the microphone levels for you. If you're a beginner, this is really good. And on the DJI, it's called Recommended Camera Settings. So you can scroll through the menu, search for the camera that you're using, and it will figure out the best input settings for that camera. This is something that I want you to be very aware of and I want to make clear because on Rode's website, it says headphone monitoring, yes. But actually, it's limited headphone monitoring. You can only monitor if you're recording internally because it's got a shared input and output jack. So if you've got that plugged into your camera, you can't plug headphones into it. You have to plug headphones into your camera. So I think it's a little bit naughty that they've said that. On the DJI, you've got an output and a headphone jack as well, separately. Another pizza slice there for DJI. Battery life on the DJI is up to six hours, and then it says up to seven hours on the road system. So very similar. To charge the case, it takes two and a half hours on the road and two hours, 40 minutes on the DJI. It's very similar, there's nothing in it really. A pizza slice to road on this one. And you can get two chargers out of that one charge. So you can get roughly 18 hours of battery life from the units. But what helps with the DJI battery is it's got auto on off feature. So when you switch your camera off, the unit powers down itself. When you switch the camera back on, it turns on. And that's good for two reasons. A, it saves your battery life when you, if you forget to turn it off. 
and B, if you forget to switch it on, this switches on for you so you know you're going to get audio. So the transmission distance is very similar on both systems. It's 250 on the DJI and 260 apparently on the Rode. But I'm going to go and test that now. So I've got the DJI microphone on this camera here and the Rode Wireless Pro on this camera here. Let's see which one does best. Here we go. Right. I don't know exactly how long this road is. And the thing is, the transmission distance is a clear line of sight. And I know when I did this test before, when I spun around like this, you couldn't hear it on the road sometimes. I'm, I'm a fair distance away. I'm just trying to like position my body a little bit towards the cameras that now I'm facing away. So we'll see if either of these are still in range. Actually, it's further than I thought. Uh, I'm glad I've got the one wheel because if I was going to walk and do this, it would, uh, it would take ages. So I'm going to go behind these trees to see if I'm still, see if you can still hear me. Can you still hear me now? I'm behind the trees. I'm going down the path a little bit. In fact, I'm going to have to stop and come back. So now I'm coming back. So I'm kind of facing the cameras at the moment and I'm just emerging from the trees. I don't know how far you can see me, uh, but here I come, I'm coming back. So I don't know if you could still hear me through all of that. If this is clearer, that's probably because I'm actually facing the cameras now, so there's more chance of the microphones still being within range and picking up the signal better because they're actually facing the camera. So although Rode says it gives you more transmission distance, it's actually not as stable as DJI. As you heard, the road was cutting out whenever I turned my back towards the camera, even well within the recommended range. Both transmitters allow you to record internally, and you can start and stop recording on the units themselves. There's a record button on both and a recording indicator, which I really like. This is good because in instances where your signal drops out, like we mentioned, you've got a safety recording internally. However, a point to the road because this actually has 32 gig of storage, which is up to 40 hours of recording. 8 gig on the DJI and 14 hours. I'm going to let you listen to both microphones now and make up your own mind because everyone has their own personal preference when it comes to sound. So I don't want to give my opinion right now, but I will tell you which one I prefer at the end. So stay tuned for the end of the video if you're not quite sure and you want my opinion. This is the Rode Wireless Pro microphone. This is what it sounds like when I'm holding it up to my face. A lot of people do that nowadays, so I just wanted to give you a sense of what that sounded like. But then this is the Rode Wireless Pro clipped on using the magnets to my jumper in a traditional sort of wireless microphone positioning. This is what it sounds like. This is what the DJI Wireless 2 microphone sounds like. I'm just holding it in front of my face because that's what a lot of people do nowadays. This is the DJI microphone mounted to my jumper using the magnetic clips. This is what it sounds like. Obviously my voice is projecting over the top of the microphone, but this is how you use these wireless microphones, so I wanted to show you what it sounded like. And this is what the DJI Lavalier microphone sounds like. I've got it mounted to the side of my jacket here. What I really like about the DJI Lavalier mic is that you can twist the clip so you can have it on both sides. So whichever side is best to have it on, if you've got the buttons on one side or a jacket or whatever, you can flip that round and even position the microphone perfectly. And then this is what the Rode Lavalier microphone sounds like clipped on to my coat here. This is what it sounds like. Let me know which one is your favorite. Now, as good as these microphones sound on their own, you're gonna get a better, more professional quality sounding audio if you use audio presets. Now, throughout this video, I've used my own. You can download them from the link in the description. And that's just gonna take it from sounding like this to sounding like this, a more full, rich, professional quality audio. Speaking about better audio, the DJI, they've introduced what's called intelligent noise cancellation. You'll probably hear a little bit of wind noise, but there's a car coming now and you'll hear that it's fairly loud. So the microphone will pick that up and it's a little bit distracting for a viewer. And all you have to do is swipe up and then press noise cancellation mode. And you'll probably hear already that it's a lot clearer. So these cars that are coming past now, you should still be able to hear me nice and clearly because the noise cancellation is gonna cancel those cars out. And I can switch it off and on on the unit itself. And this is perfect if you're out and about in busy areas with lots of traffic or lots of people talking. Pizza slice. 
both have 32-bit flow. So as you can hear right now, this is way too loud and it's probably distorting. It's red, so it's clipping on the camera. So if you record internally and switch on 32-bit float mode, you can actually save that recording by turning it down because it captures way more information and you're able to bring the volume level down. Or if you record too quietly like this, you can actually raise the level without introducing any hiss or unwanted noise. The Rode system has introduced time codes. So if you're using a lot of different cameras and systems, you can quickly sync up that audio and video in post and it's gonna be perfectly synced. The DJI doesn't have that, but there's things in your editing program, depending on what you use, where it syncs up that audio perfectly anyway. So I've never felt the need, but timecode is a more professional feature. So it's great that they've included that. So a pizza slice to the road for that one. So on paper, these are very similar, but as I said earlier, it's not about that. You need to get using them and see what they sound like and see how they work. So how easy they are to use. And based on that, in my opinion, the DJI wins hands down. Just the way it's designed, uh, the usability, it just makes it so much more intuitive to use. But when it comes to sound, I've always preferred the DJI's, but this time I think the Rode just pips it on sound quality. It just sounded a little bit clearer to me and easier to EQ, but it's still got that nasally quality that I have found Rode to have. And the thing is, you can add a preset so you can make them sound very similar, or you can just EQ it if you've got experience in audio. But what you can't do is avoid all the annoying little things that are fiddly and get in the way of making the process of filming and setting up quicker and easier. And for that reason, I highly recommend the DJI system over the road to anybody, if I'm honest. I'd love to know which one you prefer and why, so please let me know in the comments, I'd like to hear. Now if you wanna know a little bit more about the DJI Wireless 2, I actually did an in-depth review, which you can see here. But thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.